So as Prince mentioned, there's two ways in which partners can engage with Project ARIA. Um, one is through the ARIA Research Kit, and the other is via Open Science Initiatives. This section is going to focus on the ARIA Research Kit. Now the ARIA Research Kit is the program through which we provide our approved academic partners and commercial partners with glasses of their own for their research. Now there's three pillars to the ARIA Research Kit program. One is the glasses and the companion app. Um, second is our machine perception capabilities, which we provide as a service to our partners. And the third is the client SDK, which enables real-time streaming of data from the ARIA glasses. So first we'll get into the glasses. As Prince mentioned, the motivation behind building the ARIA glasses was really to provide researchers with two things. One is the ability to collect multimodal egocentric sensor data in uh, the, the types that we expect on future AR glasses. And the second is to do this in a socially acceptable form factor that enables uh, long duration usage that is ecologically valid. So it does not impact the activities and behaviors of the wearer. The second is the mobile app. Now we've designed this mobile app as a convenient way of controlling the device when a researcher is in the field collecting data. So this provides basic features such as starting and stopping recording, um, as well as configuring the sensor data to collect. And then finally, we built the desktop app for later in the researcher workflow when the researcher is back at their office. And this provides features such as managing the data that's on the ARIA glasses, um, as well as accessing our machine perception services. The second pillar of the ARIA research kit is the machine, per machine perception capabilities that we offer as a service. Now the way this works is that after recording ARIA data, a researcher has the option to select one or more machine perception services via the desktop app. Uh, they then upload the, their data, we process it, and we, we return the machine perception output. Uh, one very important point that I'd like to stress is that immediately after processing this data and returning the machine perception output, we delete the data from our servers. So as Prince mentioned, the data that's collected by our partners belongs to our partners and our partners alone. These machine perception capabilities are enabled by a set of proprietary algorithms that are designed specifically for the ARIA device. So what this means is that they provide a better robustness and accuracy relative to off-the-shelf open source algorithms. So really, like our, our goal in providing these machine perception models is so that our researchers have a rock-solid foundation upon which to do their research. We offer a number of machine perception capabilities, um, including six-off trajectories, online calibration, eye gaze vectors, and semi-dense point clouds. Uh, additionally, we're working on more machine perception capabilities to offer via our service, uh, including multi-sequence trajectory, uh, eye gaze uh, reprojection, and a few more that, we, that we'll be announcing in the future. This video gives you a kind of quick preview of the types of machine perception capabilities that we offer, and Jacob's going to be going into a lot more detail uh, on this in the future. The third pillar of the ARIA research kit is the client SDK, and this is important in that it enables real-time research and the development of real-time experiences. So the client SDK, broadly speaking, offers two capabilities. One is the ability to programmatically control the glasses, so start and stop, um, sensor configuration, all of the capabilities that exist within the mobile app. And the second is that it enables real-time data streaming to an offload compute device for real-time data processing. So these devices can include things like glasses, computers, uh, compute puck, et cetera. Um, additionally, we also provide sample apps. Uh, and these sample apps are meant to make it easy and intuitive for our partners to build apps on top of the client SDK. I'll give you one teaser example of an app that's built on client SDK. So what you're seeing here on the left is a researcher who's streaming data wirelessly in real time from the ARIA glasses to their desktop. And on the desktop, uh, you see object detection and tracking models being run. Carl will go into a lot more detail on the client SDK uh, later in this presentation. So now you have a sense of the, uh, the capabilities that uh, the ARIA Research Kit offers and why they're important for your research. But ultimately, our goal of coming here today is so that you as researchers begin to crystallize in your minds how you may be able to use ARIA for your own specific research interests. 
Um, and to motivate that thinking, I'll provide a few examples of research that we've done internally leveraging ARIA. Now, I, I love this first example, uh, magnetometer mapping. Um, and what this does is highlight the, uh, the, the rich sensor suite and machine perception capabilities of ARIA. Traditionally in mapping, uh, we've, what we've seen is maps that have been derived from visual sensors. Here we're looking at new map mod modalities. Um, we take the, um, the precise uh, location that's derived from machine perception services and combine it with the dense measurements from the magnetometer on the ARIA glasses to create a 3D field map of uh, the environment. Uh, the second example here is the human positioning system. Um, now this, this example um, highlights how ARIA can be used in the context of system research. So here we use two ARIA and a motion capture suit um, to capture the uh, uh, human body pose in the wild. Um, so here what you see in the video is an observer and a performer, uh, both of whom are wearing ARIA glasses and the performer is also wearing a mocap suit. Um, on the left, what you're seeing is the trajectory of the observer and the performer, and on the right, what you're seeing is the body pose of the performer reprojected in the RGB frame of the observer. And the third example is an egocentric CV task that is also um, uh, enabled with the six off trajectories provided by our machine perception capabilities. Um, here we use Cube RCNN to detect per frame 3D bounding boxes of objects. So now you understand uh, the capabilities of the ARIA research kit and a few examples of uh, how ARIA can be used for research. Um, the next natural question is what is the process to get uh, glasses of your own for your research? Um, so a common question is what is the criteria when it comes to uh, approving uh, partners for the ARIA research kit? Uh, we have two high-level criteria. One is that uh, we're looking for researchers who have a track record um, in uh, egocentric machine perception and AI research. And the second is we're looking to partner with uh, researchers who have an interest in exploring new AR, VR uh, use cases for, uh, for commercial and, um, and consumer applications. Um, given what you've heard today, if you're interested, uh, go to projectaria.com and uh, there's an application form where you can apply for the ARIA research kit there. Um, there's one final message that I'd like to leave you with. Uh, this year, we're committed to significantly scaling the impact that the ARIA research kit will have on the research community. And we're going to achieve this in two ways. One is that we're investing a lot in improving ARIA as a research product. Um, you're, you're seeing a lot of these new and exciting features today, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a roadmap full of exciting new features that we'll be shipping over the course of this year and beyond. Uh, secondly, we're scaling our capacity to bring on new and more research partners. And one example of this is the EGO4D consortium who are um, ex extending their work on egocentric video understanding leveraging Project ARIA data. So this is going to be a big and exciting year and we're excited to be on this journey with many of you in this room. And with that, I'll hand it off to Jacob who's going to get into a lot more detail on our machine perception services.